Hello, fishy folks. I don't know if I've actually ever showed my sump in detail, but I'm planning on making some changes to it. So I thought I'd film it and show you guys. Essentially, it's a 55 gallon tank. Uh, I can't drill it. Got it for a really good deal. I think I paid 30 bucks for it. Came with uh, two hang in the back filters, a bunch of decor, some nets, some chemicals, which I threw away. But long story short, I couldn't turn up the deal. I got it probably three, four, you know, when I started my fish room. So what's that? April. So three or four months ago. Um, it's on two pressure treated two by fours with insulation because the floor is going to get cold in the winter. And essentially the water. So I'll show you one tank. So water flows out from here, goes down this tube into this four inch uh, drain. Then for mechanical media, for mechanical filtration, it drains into that filter sock, which is just a um, drain pipe filter sock. And then the water, uh, you know, goes through the, the K1 coldness moving bed filter. See all the air in there. And then there's 28 pounds of lava rock. And then there's my sump pump. My sump pump pumps it back up into the system, into the manifold. So I don't like the filter sock. Uh, it gets dirty and I think it's causing some, some higher than I would like nitrates. I also don't like how the lava rock is just sitting there. Um, I should have planned it better and put it in something. And I think I want to add this big old pothos plant. Um, most of my tanks have some pothos in it. I bought one of those a couple months ago. Just broke it up and, and stuck it in, you know, all the tanks to help with the nitrites, sorry, nitrates. Um, but I think I want to add more. Um, so what I have essentially is a garbage pail that I'm gonna put in the corner over there. I'm gonna drill holes in the bottom and I got this idea from Corium and Aquarium Co-op. It's not his idea and I've actually thought of the idea myself, but he implemented it. And I think I'm gonna try it. So, get this out one handed. I have this garbage can. I'm gonna drill holes in the bottom of it. And I'm gonna have the water from that drain drain into here with polyfill, filter floss. Um, I checked to make sure this wasn't the fire resistant and uh, mold resistant, doesn't have any of that stuff on it. So I think it's just the regular stuff. And I'm gonna use that to mechanically filter the water. Now at the same time, what I should be doing, which I don't have anything to do it with, I don't think, is take all that lava rock out and put it in something. So it's easier to clean. The problem with lava rock is filter media is it can clog up now. If you have good filter, a good mechanical filter, it's not gonna clog up as fast. It actually won't ever clog up really. Um, but that's for another day, I think. So I think I'm going to get started. I'll be back later. All right, folks, I'm back. I've come up with an idea. I'm repurposing this old bin. It was a file bin. Filled some holes. Cracked it. Filled some bigger holes on this side. There, that's better. You can see that. Uh, currently, I'm draining my sump. So the way I do that is I have a check valve here, which shuts off or turns on the water to the system. I have a check valve here, which shuts off or turns on the drain. And then I have two options for the drain. One to go outside to barrels for my wife's garden. One to go into the slop sink down here in the basement, which is what I'm doing because the barrels are full for my extra large water change yesterday. So what I'll do is I'm going to drain this, put as much lava rock as I can in that black tote, put the rest of the lava rock uh, on this side, and try to move the um, K1 coldness media over. I'll probably end up putting some 
uh, lava rock on the bottom of the garbage can that I'm going to use for my mechanical filtration. Um, just to help weigh it down in case, uh, you know, I have a water problem, which has been known to happen. So, uh, I'm probably going to take a break in between my next segment, filming my next segment, because it's dinner time. i gotta I got to grow some chicken, corn, um, garlic bread. I'm making garlic bread on the grill. I know that's not fish related, but we all eat, so I'll uh, come back later. Okay, so what I got here, got nice English. What I have here is the garbage can with lava rock in the bottom. I'll fill that with uh, the floss. Then I have my moving bed filter. The only reason I have it in here is because I had it. I made a couple of filters out of two liter bottles that worked. I mean, they looked cool. I don't know how they worked. Never any ammonia in the tank, so I'm thinking great. But I had it, so I figured I might as well use it. And then that, ow, that, uh, that little bin with, with the substrate in it, that's just to weigh down the um, moving bed filter if water goes too low. And then, of course, we have the lava rock. So I will start to fill. Oh, another thing I didn't show you is my downpipe here is removable. So I could service the sump because you won't be able to take anything out here. With so I'd like to say I did that on purpose. I'm I'm gonna say I did do that on purpose. It's not that I forgot to glue that or anything. Yeah, did it on purpose. All right, so I'm gonna put some floss in there, fill the sump up, and see how it runs. We'll check back later. Before I do that, I'm gonna just talk a little bit about Seachem Safe, removes chloramine, sorry, chlorine, chloramine, and ammonia, detoxifies nitrite and nitrate. 250 grams, I think this was 12 or 14 bucks on Amazon. Um, it is essentially the powder form of Prime. Um, doesn't have anything for slime coat. I'm not sure Prime does either, but um, here's the great thing about this. 1.25 grams, a quarter teaspoon for every 300 gallons. A quarter teaspoon. If you're not familiar with how big a quarter teaspoon is, I had to buy special measuring spoons. Quarter teaspoon, a drop, a smidge, a pinch. I forget what all these really are, but a dash and a tad. I think a tad is quite large, but that's a quarter teaspoon. Look how small that is. So anytime I do a water change, even if I just drain my sump, which is a 55 gallon tank, probably holds about 40 gallons of water. Um, I usually let the tanks drain out as well. So let's say I'm changing 80 gallons of water. I use this. I can do that every day and I'd probably never run out of that container. So, just hang my spoons up. So let's let's try to open this one-handed. Well, that's not too bad. First of all, don't smell it, it's gross. But look, it wasn't even full. It was only up to like where that shoulder is when I got it. And I got it in April. And that's how much I've used. So virtually nothing. It smells worse than Prime, I'm telling you, it's bad. I wish there was smell of vision All right, so I'm gonna dose some Prime real quick. Sorry, I lied. Dose some Safe real quick. Fill up the sump and begin. See ya. Okay, real quick, here's how I fill my tanks. I have a Y on my slop sink. There's water in the sink because the dish, no, dishwasher, haha, <laughs> the washing machine is going. I have a Y, that's for use whenever I need. That fills my tank, so that's closed, that's open. Follows this hose, which is an old washer hose I had lying around. Plumbed into this pipe, so this valve is open. This valve is closed. And that pipe goes all the way over to my sump. Now, I wonder, I think you're saying, Mike, what's this valve? Well, that's how I drain it. It's the same pipe, I just switch valves. Pretty ingenious if I don't say so myself. 
All right, the sump is now filling. You can see right here the mess I made, and it's filling. Um, I don't really want the water going into there right away, so I may have to put a little little uh, angle on that drain on that fill. I don't want the water with the chlorine or chloramines going right into the lava rock where the beneficial bacteria is. I don't know how much damage, if any, it will do to the bacteria colony. Um, typically, my water plumbing doesn't use a whole lot of that stuff, but you know, we all have seen videos of where you know other, someone's fish died because there was three times as much chlorine in the water or chloramines in the water than normal, and they died. Anywho. I don't know where I'm going to put the pothos plant for now. Um, you may also be asking, Mike, where are your heaters? Well, when it's winter, I do have like a 300 watt heater in here and that heats the whole thing if I need it. Um, you know, I built the fish room in April where it wasn't really, it, it probably got down into the 40s a couple nights, but I do have a central air and heat in my home and I have diverted a, a vent down here I just really need to keep the water, the water, the heat in my fish room. Uh, so I'll probably be putting up some moving blankets down uh, by the entrance to the fish room just to keep the heat in. We'll see how that goes. I mean, if I have to, I'll, you know, I'll get some more heater. Good morning, fishy folks. Happy Monday. Got some pretty bad thunderstorms here in New Jersey. My uh, German Shepherd Nico doesn't like thunder. Hanging with me again. So let's talk about the sump. My sump for my fish room, 55 gallon tank, basically to hold media. Um, yeah, the additional water is nice, but it's really not that much additional water. It also makes doing water changes quite easy. But uh, the changes I made yesterday, I just wanna go over them working now. So, water drains from that four inch pipe into a garbage can. I think it was 392 at Walmart. Uh, and the garbage can contains filter floss, and at the bottom of the garbage can is lava rock, the excess lava rock I had um, in the sump. And then it's the moving bed filter, which for those of you that don't know, uh, it's K1 micro calmness. So it looks like this, it looks like a little gear. Um, the way it works is bacteria sticks to it there's a lot of surface area there obviously and when you fluidize it when it starts moving like this don't trap the filling in the water Mike see how it's all moving in there when it moves like that it takes the strongest bacteria only because they're it's crashing into each other and the weaker bacteria falls off and dies and so even though bacteria is falling off, only the strongest bacteria is there, and so it's much more efficient in a smaller space. I believe, and if you guys know more than me, please certainly leave comments and to let me know and teach me, but I believe that uh, it started in water treatment facilities, and I think the Pond Guru was the first one to really show these filters, uh, using these filters. And quite frankly, that's where I got the idea to use the K1 Colonist. I saw one of his videos when, before I actually started my fish room. Just had a couple tanks down here, and I made a moving bed filter out of a two liter bottle, and it looked cool, and I swore it worked great. Of course, I really had no way to know how well it worked, but, um, so I already had the K1 Colonist for the most part uh, when I made this, or else I probably wouldn't use it just for this system. I would probably have more lava rock or, or something else in there, but. All right, enough with the K1 Colonus lesson. Now we go to the lava rock, which is strictly beneficial bacteria. <coughs> strictly there to hold beneficial bacteria. Shout out to George from Home Applies for not being able to speak. And that's how it works. Now the only thing I have left to figure out is where I'm gonna put the pothos plant, if I'm gonna put it in there. I think I have to go to the uh, aquaponics store and check out what they have and, and figure it out. I may just take some lava, unpot that, take all the dirt out, put some lava rock, some crushed lava rock in there or just some gravel that I have and then rest the pothos in there somehow. But that's another video. All right guys, I will uh, 
I will let you guys go and I'm gonna go because it's almost time to go to work. First I gotta finish feeding my fishies and like, you know, get back to society, which I'd rather just stay here all day, but kinda did that yesterday for the most part and now we gotta go to work and like earn money so I can buy more fish. All right, kids, have a great day.